On November 1, 2004, Hank Deerfield, a gravel trucker and retired military police sergeant living in Tennessee with his wife Joan, is notified that his son Mike, a soldier recently returned from Iraq, has gone missing. Hank drives to Mike's base in New Mexico to look for him, leaving home, he helps a school custodian raise the American flag correctly. At Fort Rudd, Hank meets his son's squad and secretly takes Mike's cell phone from his belongings. Watching videos recovered from the phone, he attempts to report Mike's disappearance to police detective Emily Sanders, after she finished talking to a woman whose dog has been murdered, regrettably unable to help out, and reaches out to a friend. Mike's burned and dismembered body is discovered. Fort Rudd claims jurisdiction believing that a pipe found under Mike's mattress and the recent arrest of other soldiers for smuggling heroin indicate his murder was drug-related. Hank persuades Sanders to show him the crime scene and realizes that a green car spotted at the scene was actually blue. Belittled by her male colleagues, Sanders convinces the local sheriff to pursue the investigation, and Mike's squad mate SPC Gordon Bonner reaches out to Hank. After viewing her son's remains, Joan returns home and receives a package Mike mailed to himself, which Hank urges her not to open. Mike's credit card history leads Sanders and Hank to a restaurant, where Hank deduces Mike ate with at least two other people shortly before his death. Sanders is given sworn statements from Mike's squad by Army investigators, preventing her from interviewing them herself. She invites Hank over for dinner, and he tells her young son the story of the biblical David's battle with Goliath in the Valley of Elah. Eve, a topless bartender Hank previously questioned, recognizes Mike's squadmate CPL Steve Penning from a photograph, leading Hank to learn that Mike and Penning were kicked out of a strip club the night Mike was killed. Sanders interviews Penning, Bonner, and SPC Ennis Long, who admit to lying in their statements. After Mike got the four of them kicked out of the club, he and Bonner fought in the parking lot, Mike then paid for their food at the restaurant, and they visited a prostitute before leaving Mike, who was looking to buy drugs. Hank refuses to believe Mike's fellow soldiers could be involved in his death. Hank and the police determined that another member of Mike's squad, PVT Robert Ortiz, is AWOL, with a history of drug smuggling and a blue car. Following the police as they raid Ortiz's address, Hank subdues the fleeing Ortiz and beats him until detectives intervene. Ortiz is arrested, but Bonner is found hanged with Mike's grandfather's watch in his pocket. Sanders concludes that Bonner, who also owned a blue car, killed Mike. She learns that Angie, a soldier's wife who came to her for help, has been murdered by her husband. Hank has his son's remains sent home and Penning helps jumpstart his truck, reminiscing about Mike. Sanders matches Penning's handwriting to the signature on Mike's last credit card statement, and realizes Penning, Bonner, and Long killed Mike, then used his credit card at the restaurant. Penning has already come forward and received a plea deal, but at Sanders' insistence, she and Hank hear his confession in person, he admits to stabbing Mike after a seemingly insignificant quarrel. Hank asks him about a video of Mike torturing a captive insurgent, and the emotionally distant Penning explains, we all do stupid things. He also states that anyone could have died in that quarrel or a similar one, and that Mike was the smart one, and that, he could see, thereby implying Mike may have brought the aggression upon himself out of nihilistic despondency and the realization of the group's inability to readjust to civilian life. Collecting Mike's belongings, Hank apologizes to Ortiz, who has been honorably discharged. Haunted by his last conversation with his son, after Mike drove over an Iraqi child playing in the road, Hank thanks Sanders and returns home. He finds Joan open Mike's package, which contains a picture of his squad and a folded flag. Returning to the local school's flagpole, Hank flies his son's flag upside down.